I welcome you to the audio program of this book, Why Sex is Food. I am the author, Esopiens, and I'm going to read out the book to you for you to enjoy it, for you to understand what sex is all about, why sex is food. All right, so I hope you're going to enjoy it. Why Sex is Food by Esopiens. This book is a go-to recipe in understanding the purpose and pleasure of sex while describing its food nature. Introduction There are few topics that arouse human curiosity as sex. The biological continuity of human species hinges on it, and it is a nature that is engraved in our beings, so we can't get rid of it. The feeling, the desire, the heart, and everything that pertains to it always give us unique experience that we're never tired of pretty much like food but why is this so why do we always have to look for food just the way we always have to look for sex the answer is in the purpose and it is well outlined in the pages of this book food is designed to bond man to the environment just as sex is designed to bond male to the female we don't only eat food we eat sex. We don't only cook food, we cook sex. And again, we don't only feel hungry for food, we also feel hungry for sex. Why is food, why sex is food? It's a book that outlines the unconventional ways of understanding sex while describing its food nature. The feeling of sex is the most is the most strongest of all human feelings. And for years, human beings have not been able to crack this code of fully mastering this aspect of their nature. There has been many accounts on how this area has been mismanaged, especially by pop popular figures. But it is impossible to suppress this part of human nature, but only to learn how to channel it in the right direction. When we understand why sex is food, we're going to understand we will understand why we can let go of the desire, the feeling and the heart. We will understand why nothing can replace sex just as the way nothing can replace food. But we will only keep getting better at it, you see, as our level of knowledge and education increases in the subject. For many of all, sex is what represents one of the most intimate part of our relationships and it keeps us bonded and connected. Conversely, problems in this area has also caused increased rate of divorce and infidelity in marriages and as so increased number of broken homes and criminality in our society this book seeks to throw more light into dark areas concerning sex and solve practical problems in understanding the nature and uh, the nature of sex and its purpose end of introduction by the author a sapiens May 2021. Chapter 1 Sex and Food. Let's start by understanding what sex is. I know you've heard it and spoken the word countless times, but for the sake of this book, let's re reiterate the definition of sex. Depending on the context in which you're discussing it, sex in dictionary has got a couple of meanings. One is a sexual activity, including specifically sexual intercourse involving two or more partners. Another one is either of the two main categories, male and female, into which humans and most other living things are divided on the basis of their reproductive functions. From these definitions, we understand that sex is not only limited to intercourse. If we look, if we were to look at it in a more holistic way, we can have a better definition that will connect the two definitions. Alright, so let's define sex as everything that connects male and the female and everything that differentiates male from the female. Okay, so sex is what connects and what differentiates. Alright, let's start with what connects. First, sex connects male with the female. The number one thing every male wants to have with the female is sex. This doesn't mean male doesn't have any other thing. But sex top the list as you're going to see the reason in the course of this book. Sex brings male and female together, perhaps 
with the nature of male, you would have forgotten about female long time ago, if not for sex. Okay, so you can pretty much think about that. Sex reminds the male that the female still exists and always bring him back to her. As casual and primitive this may, may sound, it works and is the origin of all human, human relationships. Okay, we've seen that a couple of times. I mean, this is what happened among us practically all the time. All right. Now, many people think sex is just an act that has nothing to do with our makeup and origin. But sex is everything that we have. Virtually all of us came from this singular heart. See, when your parents have sexual intercourse, you know, so they eventually uh, conceive you and you're born. Okay, so and it's because sex always brings the male and female together. This is an act that can be done in absentia. Both party, parties have to be present to have intercourse. And it is that intercourse that will give rise to a productive offspring that will carry on human traits and exploit on, on head. The second aspect of sex is it is what differentiates the male from the female. Sex makes the male different from the female and that is what builds the attraction. The male is attracted to what he doesn't have in the female and the female is attracted to what she doesn't have in the male. This happens every time. Take for instance, the male is attracted to the female breast and Botox, okay? So if we are a man, you go on the street, you see a woman, you're gonna look at her breast, you're gonna look at her Botox. I'm sure that's even, uh, it's, 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 it's an innate response. You see, it is, it is inherent in us, it's a nature. So because he doesn't have any of these features, he doesn't have like she does. He doesn't have breast and Botox like she does, okay? Then these two structures are packed with fat that make her look attractive. See, is 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 the way they, they, they are packaged that make the, the, the male, the guy, you know, that man to be so attracted to her, to what he is seeing. Okay. And he's also attracted to the fact that she's got soft skin and voice, very sweet voice. Hello, you know, gentle kind of voice that you know women express and the men are always attracted to. So he's also attracted to the to the soft skin and voice that she has, but he doesn't have. Okay? The female in turn is attracted to the male's body voice, both voice, and thick skin because she doesn't have, and she's also attracted to his broad chest and huge body structure because she doesn't have as well. You see, when you've asked women what do they want in men or what do they like in men? So some women will tell you, oh, in fact, most women will tell you, I like a tall, handsome looking man. You see, describing, you know, physical masculinity, physical structure because of protection, because women need protection, women want protection. So they desire men with huge physical structure that can protect them. Right, because she doesn't have that, so she's she's attracted to that in, in the male, right? Okay, so needless, needless to say, both are attracted to their genitals, right? The male craves day and night the female vagina and always desire to put his penis inside it, inside of it as many times as he can. The female is no exception. She also craves his penis and wish wishes to have it tickle a clitoris and her original zones for maximum pleasure. Gone are those days when women feel ashamed about their sexual interest and desire. These days, women are no longer shy about their sexual interest, but now they can come boldly to men and ask for what they want sexually. Right, which is pretty much good, you know. So there's no point trying to be ashamed or feel shy about your, your, your sexual nature. This is nature. We can we can we can we can we we can cover it up, you see. So the more we express it, the more we manifest our human nature and the more we are fulfilled on her. Very important. Okay, so before less than twenty five percent of women actually have orgasm when they have sex. But now the percentage is increasing and more and more women are voicing out about their sexual dissatisfaction, which is pretty more important. 
why before men think women don't need sexual satisfaction and sex should only be for reproduction but now we understand that sex has many purposes beyond reproduction just like before people thought that the mouth is only for eating food you see then that time people think oh mouth just for eating food for survival just put something in your mouth and then you know you, you're gonna survive but now we understand that the mouth has got more important functions you see very important like for you know for communication speech for breathing for non verbal for non verbal expressions right very important and sex has purposes beyond reproduction see pleasure is part of it pleasure is an important feeling of life and everything every human being create pleasure you see sexual pleasure is the most powerful pleasure of all human pleasures and human beings will always want to have it as much as they can so with the hormonal factor and other biological differences the male craves sex more than the female and it is important because the male is the carrier of the seeds he has to bring the seeds to the female and plant inside a womb to fertilize the eggs all right the eggs are not as mobile as the sperms and can't move far distance but the sperms can run long distance and go meet the eggs in the fallopian tube so this describes and illustrates what happens in real life see just the way male look go after the female female are more or less uh, try to stay on their own be on their own go on their own until the male until the young man go meet the, the young woman you see go ask her out go date her you see so the same way too we have in real life the same way the sperm chase the egg that's the same way to the male chase the female for intercourse why the female becomes receptive of the male's gift all right sex is an important differentiating factor and because of these differences that sex has brought between male and female attraction is set up between two of them these differences build attraction between male and female and it is this attraction that ends the journey in sex you see know that there can be sex if there is no attraction and there can be attraction if there are no differences very important concept it is a principle it is differences that establish attraction and it is attraction that fosters sexual of course sexual attraction and then eventually lead to sex you see so it goes like that in that in that order so the beginning of the journey to intercourse always starts with establishing the differences between male and female which lead to attraction and eventually end in intercourse all of these are summarized as, as sex so sex is not only the act but also the being the male and female as we saw in the definition that is why we could say sex is both male and female and at the same time also say sex is what happens between the male and female all right so let's look at the subject of food let's take a moment and look at food before we go back to sex food as we know it is what we eat every day if not every time it is what we cannot do without because it is essential for our living we cannot live without food science told us that the maximum days that we can stay without food is only 10 10 to 20 to, 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 to 20 days okay so sometimes it can be more than that sometimes it can be less than that some people have actually stayed without food up to 40 days now so depend on the individual's capacity okay so after which the entire body will get breakdown and then the person can die of starvation right even at times when we are not eating our body is still making use of food already stored in our body and there's no second the past that our body is not making use of food so food is converted to energy by different metabolic processes and that energy is used to run important activities throughout our body like the beating of our heart that's the 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 the, the heart breathing the, the the breathing of our lungs the brain function the movement the secretions and other important functions in our body right times when we stay without eating food from exogenous supply our body is making use of the endogenous supply so there are basically two major ways food is supplied to the body 
the endogenous, which is the one already stored in your body, and the exogenous. That's the one that you're taking from the food that you're eating occasionally, okay? But every time your body is making use of food, that's very important, which is keeping our body, which is keeping our system running every time. So there's no time when we stay without food. Be that as may, we don't have all the food that we will need till we die in our body. We must always get food from the environment. Anytime we are hungry and our body needs some replenishment, you see, is it possible to put all the food that we will eat that we will ever need till we die inside our body? Absolutely no. We don't have that system and there's no human technology that has built such system yet. But of course, we can we can create a good storage system that's outside our body and reserve for ourselves in the environment, but not inside our body. Okay, so the bottom line is that we will always need to put food inside our body. We will always need to eat. But why is this so, and why is it connected to sex? Okay, so we'll see that in a moment. Now, the first, let's look at why we will always need food from our environment. Now, this is because there's connection between us and the environment and we cannot be separated from, from it. The air that we're breathing is from the environment and we will always need this air to be alive. Hardly can we close our nose and stay without air for just five minutes. We will almost suffocate to death. What about the water that we drink and use for other purposes? We cannot do without it. Over 60% of our body weight is water and many other elements such as the soil, minerals, microorganisms, and climatic factors in our environment all contribute to our living and survival. You see, and so all of these show that we cannot be separated from our environment. So our environment is, as 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 it were, is a continuous part of us. That is why we. That's why any disease in our environment could easily affect us because we are in continuous contact with it. See, the air that we breathe in. The water that we drink, the food that we eat, the soil that our feet touch, the weather that, the weather of the place where we live, and so on, all affect our health and survival. However, absence or inadequacies of any of these could easily affect us and become threats to our existence. Just as we've seen how important our environment is to our living and survival, so is also sex. We continuously want sex because it is critical for our survival. It is not just the feeling, it is not just the pleasure, it is what keeps us alive as human beings and as a species. We cannot be separated from it. Men cannot be separated from women and women cannot be separated from men. Sex keeps us alive, you see, and together makes us valuable as you know, human beings in our relationships and value our relationships. When you see men who are so crazy about sex and could almost do anything for it, know that it is not just that they, are, they want pleasure, even though that could be an obvious reason, but they want to fulfill the nature of, you know, the law of nature as well. Nonetheless, every energy must be channeled to the right cause if we want it to be productive. A fire is directed to the wrong cause could burn a house and burn a food, but that same fire could eat a house during winter and of course cooking nice food it is not enough to have the craving and desire for sex we must know why it is important for our survival and why it is what keeps us alive and together as humanity very important okay so why sex is food how sex is food before we go to why sex is food let's look at how sex is food now there's a difference between the two why why tells us the reason tells us the reasons of something how tells us the process or what is involved so let's look at how sex is food having analyzed analyzed sex and food separately now we want to look at how both are the same or rather how both could be compared and counted as similar sex come, comes to us naturally just as food it is built in us. We crave it, we desire it, and we are never tired of it. Oh yeah, we can be satisfied of it for a moment, but not tired of it. Otherwise, we are not normal. What keeps us healthy and alive is energy. 
we get energy from food and sex. That will be discussed much later in this book. Sex keeps us alive as a species. Food keeps us alive as a, you know, as also a species. You see, the journey of sex started when the first male and female were made and how to live and grow together. As they began to live and grow together, they found what connect both of them and differentiate each of them. Eventually, they arrive at sex. Because sex is innate and instinctive, the male and female found a treasure within and without themselves. See, it's not what somebody can, somebody will tell you. You just know that by yourself. Just begin to have the feelings and the desire. So they had intercourse. And for the first time, another human being was reproduced. What brought another human being into existence was what connected the male with the female together. You see, very important. Whenever there's need for a connection, and sometimes conception, sex is brought into the picture. And since there's need for connection every time, love and affection, sex becomes indispensable and what we have to eat all the time to stay alive. This is how sex is food. It is both direct and metaphorical and it is what we eat every time and any time and what keeps us healthy and alive. Chapter 2 Why Sex is Food Having discussed the correlation between sex and food and how sex is food, let's now proceed to why sex is food. You remember our definition of sex, that it is not only limited to intercourse or male and female status, but everything that connects and differentiates male and female. As you bear that in mind, most of our discussion on sex will center on intercourse, as that's what interests most of us. Yeah. You see, so we're going to focus more on the intercourse and sexual aspect of sex, if you can put it that way, right. So for a long time, many of us have been kept in the dark about sex on the issue pertaining to sex. It is a subject that is hardly brought to open discussion, especially where they are minors. And many claim this could be inappropriate or abuse their minds. You see, that's mostly parents. So they say, oh, you know, then let's talk about sex because children are here. Because the children hear things like this, they're still young. Let's not corrupt and pollute their minds. Okay, so, but why this excuse might be possible enough to keep young minds in the dark, but just for a while? It has also raised their curiosity towards knowing and understanding everything about sex, everything that pertains to it. So this has made many of them to go on sexual escapades and adventures that have defeated societal values and cultures. You see, for this is human nature and there's no human tactics or gimmicks that can cover it all. Very important. And why we on, why, when we understand why sex is food, we will be able to understand why we have such a strong sexual feeling and why we would not be able to live without it. What makes sex so indispensable is the same reason that makes food so indispensable or what we cannot do without. Many of us can be comfortable doing whatever we are doing until we begin to feel hungry. And that is when everything about our system yearns for what to eat and we will start looking for food. If we don't have the, the mind of fasting, in which case, if we do, we will still break the fast and find something to eat. We've got to find something to eat, you see. At first, the feeling might be mild, giving us some, you know, some time to find what to eat, look for what to eat. Yeah, the feeling always builds up. But if you're not able to find what you're gonna eat, then the feeling gets stronger and stronger until you let it subside and the cycle repeats itself, okay? Probably you've had this, this feeling a couple of times, maybe when you're doing something and maybe, or you're somewhere you can directly have access to food, but you want to eat anyway. So, why the the, 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 the the desire for food is building up, the, the hunger, that hunger is building up gradually for you to look for where you're going to get food. So during this period, what's going to happen to your body? Like your body's already exhausted of its energy stores and it is now breaking down its proteins for energy. The more the time is prolonged, the more essential nutrients are used up for energy and the body muscles begin to waste away. 
So if we still not supply the body, your body, and of course the the person you could die of starvation when the body system breaks down for lack of food, for lack of energy and nutrients. Now from these, we could see how essential and indispensable food is. To put things in perspective, let's replace food with sex and see how realistic this could be. We know we need to we know we need food to, to survive, right? We need to eat food to survive, yeah, yeah, pretty sure. Okay, so but do we also need sex to survive as well? Don't we have alternative or something better we can replace with sex? As the definition explains, sex is what connects us and differentiates us. So it is not separated and cannot be separated from us. On the very basic of it, Maslow hierarchy of human needs put sex as part of the basic physiologic human needs. The same level with food, water and air that we breathe in. Even though it's sexual intercourse it was talking about, sex on a broader view as we establish is what we, both male and female, are all about. It is one factor that affects every, every other factor. For instance, the female's appetite for food is different from that of male simply because of their sex. See, the female has different feelings, behaviors, outlook, and even body. All of these happen because of sex, right? Yeah, just like we said, the differences. What differentiate the male and female sex? Sex hormones play each role in many of these sexual act sexual differences. And our world will only get better when we continue to understand and appreciate these sexual differences and why they are important for our existence. Sex originates from the fact that male, man or humanity needs to exist in two bodily forms, male and female. So man, which is essentially a generic term, so needs to be in two bodily forms, male and female. And because of these, there will be need for male and female to form another man. Every living thing that goes through sexual reproduction has this structure, male and female, male and female components. There are other living things that undergo a sexual reproduction and do not need any male and female component to reproduce. But reproduction in man requires both male and female. You see, and that is what brings about sexual intercourse. So when we understand it, we understand in biology that there are two basic uh, types of reproduction: there are sexual and asexual reproduction. And we know in asexual reproduction, there is no need for two components. It's only one that can, you know, reproduce. Only one is required to reproduce and it has both the male and female components or it doesn't even need anything male and female component. So it can multiply, it can reproduce on its own. So we see that in plants and some bacteria and some other organisms. But sexual reproduction, we always require both male and female components. Very important. So that is what brings about the sexual concept because if male and female will be required for reproduction then something must always connect them together that's what this book has been establishing i've been sharing with you right so now the sexual intercourse does not only focus on conception but also connection the need for male and female to always come together and share love and feelings these are forces that drive human actions and behaviors on head and this is more reason why anything about sex makes human thick and make them want to know more about it. Yeah, you can see that naturally, you know, there's just that natural curiosity. Just want to know about it, want to know about sex, want to know what's going on with sex, want to have it, want to do it, want to know it, everything about it. The indispensability of sex has made its influence so strong on us and why we will always need to live, enjoy and multiply a happy life. Okay. Why we always need sex to live and enjoy and multiply a happy life. So in the subsequent chapters, we're going to look and discuss extensively the factors that delineate why sex is food. All right. So chapter three, feeling. Feeling can make us to easily understand why sex is food. 
we know we have feelings every time. I mean, whether we put our mind to it or not, we feel happy, sad, tired, surprised, relaxed, cool, afraid, angry, disturbed, worried, anxious, calm, remorse, embarrassed, encouraged, impressed, depressed, and so on. We have a negative and positive feelings. In as much as we can control our feelings and try to manage them, we cannot eliminate them. They are with us every time. And the only thing we can do is to acknowledge and appreciate them. Because there's no point of eliminating them, but there's a reason why they are there. You see, the feeling connects us to both our internal and external worlds. We know what is going on within us when we have certain feelings and we appreciate what other people are going through as well when they tell us how they feel you see you've experienced this every time we experience it every time though sometimes we may feel we may we may not feel comfortable sharing some of our some of our feelings yes It'd be like what we this concept of sex we are talking about sometimes some people don't even want to share their sexual feelings maybe towards your crush or towards your partner or their dates you know so just some people just hide their sexual feelings. They just wanna, you don't want to talk about it. Sometimes some think, oh, it's it's you know it's going overboard, or it's just being sexually obsessive or promiscuous or all kinds of things, right? So, but these are just natural feelings that we gotta express and let people just know how we feel. You see, it's not just like you cannot control. It's not that just that you 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 lose. Or you cannot control yourself. It's just telling you your ability to have these feelings. You see, very important. Your ability to have these feelings and be able to express them. You see, so there's nothing to be ashamed or to be afraid about expressing your sexual feelings. As a matter of fact, there's nothing bad about it. You see, so you should be able to express your sexual feelings. But of course, like I mentioned earlier, that your ability to be able to manage those feelings, be able to, you see, acknowledge and appreciate those feelings and know how to channel them. You see, that is what is important. That's what we should be taught. And that's what this book seeks to share with you, to explain to you, right? So, though sometimes we may not feel comfortable sharing some of our feelings, they are still what makes us humans. You see, they are what makes us animate and enjoy life. Life will be so boring without feelings. Yeah, of course. Have you ever thought of life with, without feelings? Imagine you don't know when you're happy or tired or pleased or worried. Perhaps you could just go all day without giving attention to your body. Eat feelings, eat feelings and your essential needs. Needless to say that the two top most important feelings, hunger and sex, will be out of place and anyone could easily die of starvation and our human generation will have eventually been wiped out because of no reproduction and because we cannot have these feelings of hunger and sex you see that so our feelings could be so subtle that we hardly notice them but we have but they have each impact on us on our nature and personality sometimes the obvious ones are expressed on a massive scale that they hand that they hand us some of the results that we have in life for instance, when we feel afraid, we take some actions. And when we also feel happy or excited, we also take some actions. Our feelings affect our decisions and thought process. And depending on how we feel and can control our feelings, our reasons and judgments could be affected and the quality of our decision and the results that we get in life. The feeling of sex and food are so unique in a normal condition we're never tired of them you see we're never tired of having sex or eating food we can be satisfied at the moment but never tired of them we can eat food now and be well satisfied only to, on, 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 only to wake up the following morning and then we feel hungry that and we feel like we never eaten before and the satisfaction we felt yesterday was just gonna be now something imaginary like something you're just thinking about like something I just dreaming about as if it didn't happen right because the fact that you had and uh, you were so full yesterday that you almost 
thinking of going to the toilet or vomiting or just letting out the food you felt so full and all that but today right now you're just feeling hungry again you see because it's it's nature it's nature so we can the same thing goes for sex okay the same thing goes for sex we can have sex five to three five to ten times you know in a day and the following day we are still craving more we're still craving another round you see so though sometimes appetite fluctuates with time and situation but the desire and feelings never go away it is inherent in us and then when we look at factors like factors that affect appetite like okay what about old age it doesn't affect your feeling yeah it can affect your appetite and you know uh make you uh you know feel maybe more uh have more craving for sex or not depend on many factors you know because they're affected by many factors appetite is affected by external factors why feeling is affected by internal factors so since the feeling of sex and food are inherent in us we can hardly get rid of them you see when we are hungry for food we look for food by all means when we are hungry for sex we also live for sex by all means if you wonder why an average man will pay any amount to have sex it's because he's hungry for it and will only feel satisfied after he has had it some people cover up their sexual their feelings about sex you see they cover up their feelings about sex only to end up taking wrong decisions because they've not understood how powerful it is the feeling can only be covered up but just for a while anyway it will still manifest itself because it is not meant to be covered up but to be expressed and appreciated the increased cases of rape and sexual abuse are evidences of mismanaged sexual feelings many think they can ignore or downplay their sexual feelings only to find themselves in a situation of abusing other people sexually the subject of sex is the, is the type that we must give attention to carefully and sincerely that to seek and understand why we behave the way we do and why we cannot do without them very important the feeling of sex starts as early as birth as a matter of fact the first part of the body that draws the baby's attention and always been curious to know about is the genitals here yeah, maybe you've seen that with children how they do what we call playing doctor they play doctor they touch their 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 genitals right their their their, their sexual organs external sexual organs the baby as soon as they can talk and recognize things it began to ask the mother every everyone around him what his sexual organs are used for hmm it must be that he is having strange feelings totally different from the rest part of the body whenever he touches or thinks about it you see that so even right from why we are born the feeling has been engraved in us so this feeling and curiosity is what we carried on to to, to adolescence and adulthood and if we are in an environment that doesn't allow easy discussion about sex about sex matters then we find ourselves along alone struggling and, for, and, and figuring out our sexual issues and problems many many kids only actually discuss with their parents what they are going through sexually and how they feel in fact many could not even discuss with their parents many of these kids Many of them they cannot even discuss the period what they are going through sexually you see and there could be two reasons for this let's look at three reasons for this the first reason is these parents they know their parents you know this student know that their parents don't give any room for such discussion even though some of the parents might be interested or they care about sexual matters or don't just but they didn't just find it pleasant to talk about to discuss with their children right the second reason could be that there's some parents that don't care they just don't care about it they don't mind whatever happens to the children and their you know with their sexual life they don't care if they have sexual feelings or not the third reason can be that some parents take things too seriously and religiously that they don't even allow the children to express themselves they cover everything up under the cloak of religion and, and morality right so but this doesn't help children because you've got to discuss it this is nature you don't tell them to not you know to 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 
to to to to to to practice abstinence you know practice abstinence no you give them complete you give them comprehensive sexual education that's how to do it not to tell them to to do abstinence because the the more parents are telling the children to do abstinence the more they are drawn into sexual affairs into sexual relationships the more they are getting tempted to have sex because they're telling them about abstinence you see but rather give them complete comprehensive sexual education that's going to help them we're going to see some of it in the rest part of the book so many children however when they leave their parents their parents custody and stay on their own they go overboard in finding answers to all these mystical sex questions okay and in that quest they engage in many sexual escapades and give themselves they give themselves to sexual frivolities so this comes as a, as a revenge to the parents for keeping them for so long in the dark about sexual matters right but only if we understand how important this subject of sex is that then we understand it its value that then we value its education and be willing to share with anyone including our children very important sexual feeling makes us crave for sex hunger feeling makes us crave for food and the feelings are what drive us to preserve ourselves as a species and as individuals on earth as a matter of fact these feelings are so connected that as we feel satisfied for one we crave another for instance we feel like having sex after eating food and we feel like eating after having sex you see if you, if you know if you notice that that you know most times then you after having sex you just have this craving for food and just after eating food maybe you go on outing with your with, with your date or with your crush you just know you just feel that desire again to have sex after eating food and in that very moment when there's love in the air we eat sex as food and eat food as sex the two in the two are intertwined and interchanged and because of our indispensable sexual feeling is pretty much like food we appreciate why sex is food chapter 4 purpose in this chapter we will understand and consider one of the most important as- aspects of sex and food purpose have you ever found out that the, the reason why we have sex and why it was made in the first place knowing the purpose of sex is one of the ways in which we can know why sex is food in the previous chapter we understand the impact of feelings in sex and food and how both are tightly connected in this chapter you want to look at the purpose you want to understand the purpose of sex okay so why do we need sex and why do we need food and what they are meant to achieve all right so let's go back to our definition of sex remember sex is everything that connects male with a female and everything that differentiates male from the female in this definition we understand that sex is the collection of everything that we need to know about male and female and we know that the only two forms of humans are male and female why male and female okay so why not only one form of human being? I know that question will be left for nature to answer because there are many things that we don't know why they are why they are made or created that way. Okay, for instance, does anyone know why we have five fingers, two hands, two legs, okay, one head, one mouth, two ears, you know, and so on and so forth, different part of our body and even some other things that we can see in the environment. Does anyone know the reason why we have these things? Okay, so in as much as we can give our own ideas and speculations about why those things are the way they are, I still believe that the reason, the main reason, the real answer is with the nature or the creator who in its wisdom has created or made those things that way. Be that as me, understand the purpose of sex is not out of our reach for knowledge. Since human beings are created in two forms, something must always connect them and make them live, live together and grow together. Just as the way something must always connect man with his environment, 
What connect me with a female together is sex. What connect man to his environment together? What connect man to his environment is food and other things. Okay, so actually when we look at food, we can summarize everything that man got from his environment as food. Okay, since food is essentially what sustains man and make him live and stays healthy. So everything that contributes to this will be called food. So food is what man essentially gets from the environment and is what connects man to his environment. So think again about sex. If there is no sex that is what connects male and female, like we've established, they will have forgotten each other and differentiate you know, from each other a long time ago. Sex brings male and female together for productivity for creativity, for prosperity, and for longevity. You see, sex becomes a force that binds man, man together with a woman. You see, it, it, it becomes a force that binds man together, not only in action, but also in being. You see, the male is attracted to the female nature, and the female is attracted to the male nature, like, like we've established. The purpose of sex, therefore, is to keep man, that is, the male and female together on earth, and expand their species into the next generation. In this knowledge, sex is food because its purpose is similar to that of food. And as we've established, food keeps man on earth as individuals. Sex keeps man on earth as a species. Okay? So why as individuals you eat food to, to, to survive? Okay, we have sex as a species to also to also survive. So it's all about survival, right? Yeah, so food connects man to his environment, sex connects man to his species. So both sex and food are established on the pattern of connection and sustenance of human species on earth. If you wonder why you're always crazy about food and sex, it is because nature doesn't want to take a chance or now it must keep you alive and make you ready on earth. You know if you don't eat food as an individual, you may starve yourself to death and of course, if you don't have sex with your partner, you may not have anyone to replace you when you die. You see, why, why we think about other people, other people, oh, let them give birth to children, let them be fertile, let them, I don't care about having children. But you think about yourself, like, think, put yourself in other people's shoes. And imagine everybody's thinking like you, everybody's thinking like the way you're thinking. Nobody's going to remain on earth, you see. Nobody's going to be there again on earth. So, you know, as much as you're thinking about other people having children, you should also think like that for yourself. That, okay, if they are not thinking of having children like you, who is going to remain on earth? Who is going to remain on earth? So, everybody must think of replacing themselves. That's very important, you see? So, if you don't have sex with a partner, you, you know, you may not have anybody to replace you and so nature keeps the thoughts, the feelings and the actions and the desire about food and sex so strong that no human being, no normal human being can resist. You see, on average, a man thinks two to three times at least a day about sex. An average human thinks about sex at least, you know, one or two times. Sometimes it can be more than that, at least, you see. The male thinks more about sex and the female thinks more about food. This is important because the male carries it, you know, it cares to pre to preserve humanity by by sowing his seeds, while the female cares to preserve humanity by nurturing her offspring as seeds. You see. So in short, everything is towards human sustenance and succession on earth. So the purpose of sex is to keep us alive just as the purpose of food. So we have sex to keep and enjoy our species on earth. We eat food to keep and enjoy our living on earth. Very important. Alright, so that's the end of chapter 4. Chapter 5 now. Functions. How are the functions of sex similar to the functions of food? We know there are many functions of sex but how are these similar to the functions of food? So in this chapter, we want to understand and analyze three important functions of sex and see how they are related to food. Bear in mind that the functions of sex are discussed in the light of the functions of food, okay, and vice versa. 
So we know that food provides us with energy and nutrients. When we eat food, we don't only enjoy the taste of the food, but we also benefit from the content of the food, which could eventually be the most important thing in food. We know food serves us many benefits, okay? That cannot be overemphasized. But the essential function is to give us energy and nutrients, which in turn will be used to run the body metabolic processes, build our tissues, and keep us healthy. In a comparative manner, let's look at sex. Sex provides us with bonding, that is energy, and reproduction and recreation, that is nutrients. Okay? So there's release of abundant sexual energy when we have connection, when we have connect, when we connect with our opposite sex, with our partner. Many of us have done so many things because of this influence we got from the opposite sex. Okay? Some have even gone to the level of doing extraordinary things because of the of this influence that we call sexual energy. We know we can't do work without energy, but many of us are unclear where these energies come from when we perform some work, especially on a different level. Take for instance a young man who has a girlfriend at a close by when he's playing one of our, one of his favorite sports. He experiences a peak performance when his girlfriend is present compared to when she's not. He knows that what happened was because his girlfriend was present, but he wouldn't just know that there is sexual energy somewhere that provided him with the extra performance, you see, that he had during the sport. Very important. And there's so many things that we've done under the influence of this sexual energy. And many wonder why this energy came, where this energy, they wonder where the energy came from and if it is what they can always invoke. Of course, they can always invoke it, definitely. We can always generate sexual energy by connecting with the opposite sex. By connecting with someone who you are sexually attracted to, the person that we love and always want to be with. For men, it could be sisters, aunties, girlfriends, wives, mothers, and female mentors and coaches. Now, when I mention sexual attraction, it doesn't mean just intercourse, okay? Just but understanding the fact that, okay, like we've established in this book, that the male and female, what connect and differentiate. So, you having that attraction to the opposite sex is based on the fact that you are both sexual beings and then you both have sexual differences that you are both attracted to. Very important, which establish the energy uh, the sexual energy we are talking about, the the, the pulling force, the, the magnetic force, all right, very important. So, the sexual energy is so abundant that when when you begin to leverage on it, your level of, your level of performance and productivity will dramatically improve. So, to elaborate this discussion more, let's look at the function of sex under three categories. The first function is recreation. The first function of sex we will discuss is recreation. I call this the pleasure function of sex. We know sex gives us pleasure. We feel happy, relaxed, refreshed. The kind of pleasure that we get from sex is, is like no other. Its energy is so different and vibrant. We don't get it from anywhere. And that is what makes sex so unique and special. It is a pleasure that runs all over our body and raises our desire for more. We can't, we can sacrifice anything to have this pleasure, believe me, especially for men. And many people have seen, many people have sex solely because of this purpose. The pleasure makes us feel satisfied anytime we have sex and always makes us to want more and more and do more. It's one major force that keeps bringing us back into the heart. Many people may not love sex if it does not have this pleasure function. For real, think about it. Human beings are designed to want and seek pleasure. We do things that gives us pleasure. Yeah. You know how many things that you've done that you know, oh, you're doing it because you want to get pleasure, because you want to be happy with yourself, with, you, know, you want to feel good, you see. So we do things to give us pleasure, make us happy, feel good, right? This can clearly explain why some people are addicted to sex. The pleasure is reinforcing and renewing. 
we don't only love sex while having it we love the aftermath and the way it makes us to feel in our body and that's what makes us want to come back for it more and more the pleasure function of sex make, makes us love sex we are never tired of it satisfaction can only be for the moment we will still want more and desire to come back and do it this pleasure function of sex makes us to want to connect and bond more with our sexual partner we want to love and care more you see the pleasure also makes us to, to uh, also makes our system to feel relaxed and ease our body off tensions and stress we want to tolerate and accommodate people more we want to become less angry you see when we are feeling pleasure we do you know when we feel pleasure we hardly feel angry we feel angry you see we don't feel pleasure and feel stress so we just feel less stress less tense you know karma you know cool headed right yeah because you are having pleasure yeah so the world the world becomes interesting to live in and everything becomes easy to deal with this pleasure aspect of sex has made achieving goals for some men to be quite easier and faster some people feel energized after having sex and want to go back and do what they've once abandoned. As I've mentioned earlier, there's definitely some dose of energy that are infused into our system every time we have sex. And that energy can help us to accomplish a lot of tasks. If you experienced or heard some people said that, that their self-esteem was raised after having sex with their partner, and they feel more valued and appreciated then you know it because of the pleasure that sex gives the pleasure that ease you have pressure of trying to please people or looking down on yourself you literally see yourself as someone who shares love and please in satisfying yourself and your part and your partner this is the height of pleasure and satisfaction in life to bring this in context let's look at how sex is food based on on this first function of sex and then why sex is food okay so we know that food gives us pleasure and needless to say that many of us eat food because we enjoy it people don't eat food that they don't like or enjoy forget about the nutrients if you don't enjoy eating a particular food you most likely avoid eating the food you will not want to eat the food you see because you don't have craving for you, you don't enjoy it. you don't feel the pleasure that you have when you eat normal food you see so the first thing is pleasure the, the, the feeling good like does it taste good in your mouth does it make you feel good you see so pleasure is pleasure is an important aspect of food you see in fact many people that many people many things that we do to food actually yeah so it gives us maximum pleasure when we eat food many things that we do to food actually gives us much more pleasure but as a matter of fact cooking and other other things that we do to food cooking cooking and other processing that we do to food you see may not so much in, improve the nutrient but to give us pleasure when we eat it very important some people enjoy eating hot food while some other people enjoy eating good food some people enjoy eating sweet why others enjoy eating only salty and savory umami and these are geared towards giving us pleasure and making us feel good and that's to tell you the power of pleasure right so why the pleasure thing might be physical as it affects our body it's also psychological because it affects our mind you see the food that we eat and feel good about will most likely give our body more nutrients than the food that we don't feel good about this is because it is our mind that controls our food digestion absorption and assimilation so any food that we don't feel good about our mind will not allow it to enter our body and so lose the nutrient therefore no matter the nutrient level of any food if you don't feel good about it this is applicable to sex as well no matter how good the food is if you don't feel good about it you will not get nutrients out of it very important so that is what we have and it's applicable to sex as well you see sex that you don't enjoy 
the sex that you don't enjoy might probably not make you feel good and alive. So you could feel lots of energy and passion and there could be it could be what could make you deter from sex. You see. But the pleasure of sex reinforces our love for sex. Very important. The second point, the second sub heading is rejuvenation. That's the second function of sex. Rejuvenation. So I call this protection function of sex. See, this can also be therapeutic. Sex renews our body and makes our body systems work properly. Scientific researches indicate that sex improves cardiovascular functions, immune system, and musculoskeletal system. It also protects the body against prostate cancer in men and prevents sleep disorders by inducing secretion of sleep causing hormones and stress-free chemicals. Sex prevents stroke. Sex also has emotional protection. It protects, protects us from feeling angry and hostile against our partner. It improves our mental performance and alertness and it is known to rejuvenate our skin and makes us look and feel younger. How is food connected to this protection function of sex? We know food protects our body. It does that in many ways. One way is boosting our immune system and increasing its ability to fight against infections. Another way is building our body tissues and repair them when they are damaged. So food gives our body energy and helps it to run its basic metabolic functions or processes. Food also has a way of protecting us emotionally. Because when we feel satisfied, we feel less hungry. They say a hungry man is an angry man. So when one is hungry, one is one inch closer to anger. So food allows us to live longer and age slower. It protects our skin and prevents direct invasion of pathogens into our body. Right? Very important. Reproduction. That's the third point. Reproduction. The third function of sex is reproductive function. So I call this the purpose function of sex. We know sex is designed not only for our enjoyment but also for our procreation. For us to keep our species on head. One of the very first commandments that was given to man, male and female, is to be fruitful and multiply, to replenish the earth. Right? As much as that could you know could have many other meanings. The main idea is to reproduce and have our offspring feed the head. The head cannot manage itself without humans. It is humans that build roads, houses, cars, and so many lofty things that we see in our world today, right? All the technological breakthrough and all those things that we're seeing. Okay, but animals cannot do but nothing. They cannot do any of this. They cannot do any of this. So this world is so big that we can never be short of space without because of overpopulation you know like some people are saying oh at a point we're gonna we're gonna you know get short of resources we're gonna become overpopulated that everybody's just gonna fill the entire head we're not gonna have space anymore that is never true it cannot be true if uh, there are population right now if it can be times 10 i mean the population of the entire world it can be times 10 who is he be able to live comfortably here on earth without so much problem because of so many abundant unlimited resources that we have access to okay so the world is so big that we cannot even you know get short of space because of, of, of our population rather we can only be short of resourcefulness you see not because of lack of resources but because of lack of willingness because of lack of the 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 the, the, the desire to to bring out a treasure that's resident in us. So there's abundance and there's more than enough in our world. There's more than enough resources in our world. And if every one of us decides to be rich, nothing can stop anyone from doing so except themselves. You see, the resources are abundant even to cater for everyone's need and wants. Therefore, sex gives us the, the opportunity to multiply our species and increase our population on earth, thereby preventing our extinction from health. Since the first man was made, human beings have been occupying the surface of the head 
for hundreds and thousands of years there has not been any time or occasion when all human beings have been wiped out from the surface of the head even in the time of flood according to history noah and his family were preserved to restore human population on the earth so even since that time of creation humans have been dominating and replenishing the earth from this we know sex is food because food allows us to reproduce reproduction cannot be done without food conception and reproduction cannot be carried out without a supply of energy and nutrients from food food on its own does cause the reproduction of body cells as in the case of bodybuilding and repair of tissues right yeah we that happens in our body every time practically every time right so thousands of cells die in the body every day and they are being replaced because there is nutrient and energy supply from food the reproductive function of food is clearly seen in pregnant women as many of them eat more during pregnancy because of reproduction of the growing cells and tissues of the baby right inside the mother's womb so when we look at our body we look at the nutrients that food has deposited in our body over a long period of time right from the time of conception to where we are right now people have not eaten well people are not eating well or lack some nutrients in their diet could be susceptible to attacks by pathogens and come down with disease which could take their lives you see so lack of food can decrease human population while abundance of food can increase human population this was what happened during agricultural revolution because of so much food so human population increased because food production also increases so in all of these we've seen how food emulates the function of sex and in the light of this function sex takes the practical functions of food so this establishes one of the reasons why sex is food chapter 6 stimulants in this chapter we want to discuss the similar factors that stimulate the desire for both sex and food we know that there are certain factors that trigger a desire for sex and food and these factors have been present for ages some are within us some are outside of us let's discuss these factors under three headings first the physical second the physiological and third the psychological first the physical these are factors that are seen by our physical eyes they are connected to looks and physical structures okay the physical stimulants are for sex this the physical stimulants for sex are the looks they are things that our eyes can see and get our body sexually aroused the looks are very important when it comes to stimulation of sex just as the way we have it in food most men if not all men are sexually aroused when they are when they see a sexually attractive woman if a woman looks younger and prettier she's most likely to send a strong sexual signal to men with or without her intention now we've seen this couple of times you know you as a man when you go on the street and you see a woman if she has all these features she's got nice looking body she's got nice looking face beautiful pretty and she looks younger you know so you just feel attracted to her so it's a it's a physical stimulant okay so when it comes to sex looks is everything for men a man can look at two women and feel more sexually att- attracted to one than the other most of the reasons would be based on the looks perhaps a dress looks so sexually attractive she did some makeups that makes her look more beautiful and has a good curve at the front and back you see than the other woman so when you're comparing two women you will always have more uh sexual preference to one than the other yeah because of all these uh, things that we mentioned you see because men are basically attracted to looks looks is a major physical stimulant for men when it comes to sex very important okay now men love women with big 
with big boogters and cone-shaped breast. You see, this sends a signal that the woman is healthy and she can carry its offspring if fertilization occurs and be able to breastfeed its baby. So the the the, the, the boobs shows that he can breastfeed the baby as like looks big and you know healthy and the big butts also show that she can conceive she has a good womb to plant a seed and they also be able to give birth you know she's not gonna have problem with giving birth right very important you see so women who understand these secrets about looks actually make sure that they fine-tune their body shape and make it portray a healthy feminine look and make sure that they wear body fitted clothes they don't wear all kind of loose and unattractive clothes but they make sure they wear very attractive you know sexually attractive clothes that bring out a uh, good look right yeah so a lot of women have done this they're doing this and they are using that to attract men a lot yeah because they know men are always so attracted by the looks by what they see okay so they top they top it up with nice makeup you know and if they want to go natural they also make sure they look so good the look is so strong to captivate any man and make them bow right so to know how strong these physical stimulants are we can see this how thriving the porn industry is see what we see in porn industry is basically people are uh, you know in nude nudity, nudity uh they are showing their you know their, their, their sexual organs and they are having you know uh stage act sex see? so looking at that just looking at those those scenes those videos and those pictures men are sexually aroused because we're talking about looks you see people especially you know especially men they stay on porn for most part of their day watching people having sex right even though they are not having sex with their partner as the man who is watching the porn is not having sex with a partner or doesn't have a partner with, with him maybe probably not having a partner with him but he's still stimulating himself sexually and is experiencing sexual pleasure just because of looks right so and that is the power of vision of of visualization seeing something you see what your eyes can see right so in the same vein we can say this with food we can see this with food do you know how many times you've eaten some food because of the way it looks you see a food may have some nice taste and aroma but if, it, if, it, if, if the look is not appealing you may not be stimulated to eat the food you know how many times you've seen some food i don't feel attracted to eat, even though they may have nice look they may have nice nutrients and all those things but you don't just feel like attracted to eat the food because the look doesn't look attractive to you you see it doesn't look attractive to you imagine you saw a nice food only for you to find out that there are some you know very dirty things you know around the food some feces around the food no matter how much you love the food i'm sure the size of feces or, or any deaths around the food will kill your appetite immediately you know because it's all about looks it's all about what you see you see that that affects your appetite affects you know your craving for the food so if it doesn't look good the principle if it doesn't look good it doesn't taste good if it doesn't taste good it's not good for your body you see that's a very powerful concept because it's a sentimental assumption that overrules facts this shows that the, the, the same principle apply for both sex and food when it comes to physical stimulant if you don't love food if you don't love what you see in your partner you may not be sexually aroused you see and if you are not aroused sexually you will not enjoy sex with your partner you see if you're not sexually aroused you will not enjoy sex with your partner you see that is why it's important to see everything good in your partner it will help your sex life this doesn't mean your partner will, will not have things that you physically have bought or fight against or don't like but you will just focus on good because good when you focus on good good will multiply and cover the bad side see in this same way you're going to have a mind-blowing sexual experience with your partner and you will live a happy and sexy life right remember a good look for yourself and your partner make you feel good and so keeping keep working on your ability to look good so that you your partner will feel good more about you and 
about about you you and your partner will feel more good about yourself about you you know everybody will feel good about themselves right good very important yeah so the second point is the physiological the physiological they are stimulants that are generated within the body see these are hormones the neurotransmitters and other chemicals that are aroused or sexually men who have higher level of testosterone have more sexual craving than men who do not you know it has been shown scientifically it has been shown we've seen this you know every time men who are who are filled with a lot of sexual hormones who are filled with a lot of you know uh a lot of uh male androgens yeah the sex hormones they are more they have more sexual drive they have more sexual craving they have more sexual sexual desire than men would do not the sex hormones affect how women crave for sex in the cause of their menstrual cycle as well the estrogen the progesterone the fluctuation in the level of these hormones affect their sexual desire as well see, they, they, they reach the peak during the ovulation period some people will, will have low sexual desire have been assisted medically to boost their sexual drive by taking synthesized sex hormones like for instance women during or before or after menopause you see so they could be assisted uh with some hormones to boost their sexual drive in terms of uh giving them uh all these uh synthesized uh female hormones yeah to increase their sexual desire yeah okay so another important physiological stimulant are the general body states the health condition and the system that triggers the body desire for sex people who have active lifestyle tend to be more sexually involved than people who do not the active functioning of body internal and external sexual organs make it easy to get stimulated for sex the glands penis and clitoris have numerous nerve endings that make them to be highly sensitive to touch and sexual arousal the breast nipples and regions around it for women are also sensitive to you know to touch so if you want to arouse a woman and you know she love uh having sexually aroused and her breast so you can make sure you touch those areas as well you know the, the breast and the regions around the nipple they are highly sensitive to touch and because they contain a lot of nerve endings they are highly innovated right so so the active function of these parts make it easier to crave and enjoy sexual pleasure to see how food is connected to this let's look at how we crave food there are different hormones in our body that increase our appetite for food ghrelin for instance does increase our appetite for food growth hormone and thyroid hormone also do likewise the active functioning of the digestive organs especially the ones at the beginning region that's the oral cavity, the taste buds, and the salivary glands all make us enjoy the pleasure of eating food. So when we have good appetite based on the normal function of these systems and hormones, we lead a more happy and healthy life. And this is how we enjoy our sex life as well. Then the third category, the third factor is the psychological. The psychological. This has to do with your thought and your thinking process. Your thoughts can stimulate the desire for sex. That's all happening in your mind. You see, as a matter of fact, your most sensitive sexual organ is your mind. So you hardly can do anything without your mind. People who masturbate do it on the basis of engaging their mind to assume that they are having sex with a partner while they are not. So it's more or less like deceiving their mind. You see? So they either watch porn or stimulate or stimulate themselves <clears throat> they either what they they either watch porn to stimulate themselves or they imagine it so it all boils down to using their mind to arouse their sexual feelings see that that's why they are able to come without having real sex a man can see a naked woman and don't feel sexually aroused if his mind is not there and a man may not see any woman and still feel sexually aroused because of his thoughts. So he's just thinking about the last sex he had with his partner or the last one he watched yesterday night. The mind is important for controlling our sexual thoughts and desires. 
people who struggle to reach with reaching orgasm while having sex could be because of the conditioning of their mind. You see, if their mind is not settled enough and they got engaged with a lot of stressful thoughts, they are most likely not going to come because the mind is a highly sensitive sexual organ and any alteration to it focus on sex as at the time of having it, it may affect the end result, which is orgasm. Okay, that's the, the peak of pleasure. We see this orgasm with, uh, uh, with ejaculation anyways. We see this every time with food. Thinking about our favorite food alone can make us to start salivating and crave eating the food. Whether we imagine or see the food, the most important thing is for our mind to be connected to the food. So that is where the appetite comes from. Some people have a lot of food to eat but don't feel like they don't feel like or have appetite for eating the food simply because their mind is not connected with the food. Mind connection has to do with things like their past experience about the food, what they've been told about the food, their feeling about the food and what their mind could perceive about the food currently. If the food is not eatable in their mind, it is not eatable in their mouth. So the mind is everything as we've seen it with sex. So that ends chapter six. Now chapter seven, cost. What is the cost of sex? You can think for a moment the cost of the last food you had. Maybe you cooked it or it was given to you. But let's assume you cooked it. You went to the market to buy all the food ingredients that you need. Then you came back home to cook the food. You did the cooking and it turned out well. Then you heard the food and felt satisfied. So what was the cost of the food that you had? Okay, so let's start. So the cost starts from you as a person. You see, you are the one that started the cost of you cooking the food. Your health, very important. You are, if you are not healthy, you won't think of going to the market or preparing any food. So in that case, you will need someone's assistance if you are not healthy. See, that's another cost. Yeah, that's a big cost right there. If you are not healthy, you need someone to assist you with it. Now, another cost is your availability. Yeah, you may be healthy, but if you are not available. Yeah, you may be healthy, but if you are not available to go shopping or prepare the food, you won't still cook the food, right? So availability is part of the cost. It's part of the requirement for cooking a nice food right other factors would be your energy your resources your culinary skills and so on they are required to get a nice meal done right so now looking at this in the context of sex you want to understand that sex are the requirement as food because it is actually food first the cost of sex is your health like we mentioned earlier for food if you're not healthy you don't think of having sex or better still you don't feel like having sex yeah the health is very important as far as your sexual desire is concerned have you noticed that people who have problems with their health also have problems with their sex life there's no amount of sexual stimulation that you can receive if you are not healthy sexually you are not active sexually you see so it all boils down to your health, it all boils down to the health of your sexual organs, the health of your body part. Because when, when we talk about sex, we are not just looking at just your sexual organs, but we are looking at your entire body because it's actually your entire body that is involved, you see, that is involved every time you are having sex. It's very important. So sex requires your health because there must be some level of strength and wellness that you must have in your body before you think of having sex, right? Women who sometimes have bursts of headache, they tell their spouse of their unavailability for sex. And sometimes the reason can be tiredness, weakness, stress, or some emotional trauma or imbalance. In any of these cases, the person's health is impaired and sexual activity will be affected. Also, the level of functioning of your body, sex 
sexual organs also matters. For men who are castrated or those who have erectile dysfunction will know how difficult it is to endure sex instead of enjoying it. Health is one of the major costs of, of, of sex. Your time and availability is, is another major cost of sex. It, it is very important, your time and availability. Okay, so what does that mean? So, though most people actually would think that having time for sex, you know, they think they have time for sex, and especially men, they always say, okay, yeah, of course, I have time for sex, you know, we're going to have it and all that. But it is not like the way they think, you see, it is not a casual thing. To have sex for men, you see, to really have sex will mean that you are not going to do any other thing apart from sex. Your mind is not going to wander about, you see, you're not going to start thinking about something, what you want to do next or your unfinished project, you know. So when you are having sex, it simply means you are being here and now. You are engaged with your mind, with your physical body, with everything. So all your focus and attention is on, is on sex and your partner. And that is what brings the best out of it, the best out of it. So you get the best out of sex when you give it your utmost attention. When you give it your rapt attention. So the more attention you give to it, the more you enjoy every every moment of it. You see, just as the more attention you give to cooking food, the more nice it comes out. Right. Proven. And you know, when it comes to women, they actually want and need time for sex. Women live in eternity and don't see time as the way men do. So when a man is always focused on going straight to the heart, a woman is not like that. She needs time to get ready. That's why we have foreplay. Okay, so you can actually do that, do foreplay to get her ready. Why you also get yourself ready as well. But since I own take longer time, so you have to make sure you also extend the foreplay so that she uh, she actually take her time to get ready. Very important. Yeah. So that allow her to get ready before you do the main act. So some women are pissed off by men who always complain about waste of time while, while caressing or doing foreplay with them. As a matter of fact, women believe they should be given time and attention. And all this connotes to them as love. So women don't feel loved when they are not given attention. And no matter how much things you give to them, if you don't give them attention, you are missing the main ingredient. Attention is not just what they want, it is actually what they need. Okay? And since attention is time, it costs, it is the cost you have to pay. Give it to them and they will give every other thing to you. In a nutshell, creating time for sex is paramount if you want to enjoy it without creating an unnecessary pressure. There will be occasional time for quickies and casuals, but sex is fully enjoyed when adequate time is allotted for it. When it comes to sex, giving your energy is another price that you have to pay. Every sex require, requires both your physical and emotional energy. All the movement that you do and the feelings that you express demonstrate giving out your energy. Men who are sexually active know that they can be physically drained of their energy after sex. And sometimes they feel hungry after the heart to replenish their lost nutrients. The energy is also expressed in form of giving maximum attention to the heart and avoiding distractions. Unwanted thoughts during the heart that affect how well you enjoy it. So being able to control your thoughts and focus only on the act requires energy and that is why having a good sex will always require energy. Okay, so one thing you also want to pay attention to when it comes to the cost of sex is your resources. There will definitely be need for your resources, either in cash or in other value. We know nothing is free in life. Yeah, there's no free lunch. Even what you are giving for free is not free because there's a cost attached to it. You see, there's a cost of production. So, in any sex, so any sex will definitely not be free. People who are married will tell you that they don't even have sex as they, as, as they want. Chocolates of people who are not married. So, not because they don't have the legal right to have sex with their spouse, but because of the cost of sex. 
You see, when it comes to sex, we know there's need for proper hygiene. And that can be done without buying of things which will require some money. Apart from the environment where they have to be done, one must make sure the general hygiene of the place is okay. There is enough fresh air, clean bedroom if it's in the house, and all the materials used are clean. There's also need for body cleanup before and after sex. So depending on how long the heart takes, one may sweat, you may sweat, or have semen or vagina secretions stain the body or the bed. And so there will be need for shower or cleanup. And all this will require spending some money. Okay? Meanwhile, this doesn't mean without money one cannot have sex with one's partner. Of course, you can have sex with your partner. It's not going to be like you're paying for it every time. Yeah. It just means that there's a cost for every sex, whether you are paying for it early or not. You see, you may buy or before. You may buy those items before or after. The items that you need, you see. But the important thing is you got to buy them. Yeah, because you need them. So, but you should know that you always need those items if you want to keep and enjoy a good sex life. Sex requires a lot of hygiene if it is to be maintained and enjoyed. People who have sex without taking good care of their body have higher tendency of contracting both sexually transmitted disease and skin diseases. When the body is not clean, infections can easily enter the genitals through the skin contact and so breed into disease inside the recipient's body. If there is basic hygiene, most, if not all, of the easily transmitted pathogens will be prevented from entering the body during sex. Depending on the type of sex, for most part of our body involved, the inside of the body is always exposed to the outside of the body. We have seen this in the case of penis when you want to whether you urinate or even have uh, ejaculation or something, you see how fluid comes from your body through your penis to the, the mouth through your glands penis outside you see so we call that uh, external uh, external uh, meatus that's external opening yeah so whether it is for oral whether it's oral vagina or anal sex there's engagement of these parts you see there's engagement of these parts of the body which directly connect it to the interior of the body you see so all this part of the body the penis the vagina even the breast they all connect the internal part of the body to the external part of the body you see so any transmission of infection from the outside to these places could easily bring infection into the body yeah we've seen this many in in many cases you know we've seen this we've seen many cases of these in people who are not hygienic okay and those who live in poor countries they have sex without taking care of their body and they end up with several infections that little money will have you know that they supposed you know yeah would have they're supposed to have spent in preventing it could have solved you see so but when the thing becomes a problem little money is not going to be enough to solve the problem anymore because prevention is not only better than cure it is safer easier and cheaper than cure so you can have sex for free without paying or being paid for it but sex is itself is never free because there are costs to it like we mentioned yeah so your knowledge and skills about sex will also be part of the cost if you're not aware about some of the things that i've shared you will have a higher tendency of staying healthy if you already have that knowledge you have a tendency of staying healthy yeah because you know these things that you will be able to apply them so why you enjoy all that you want about sex but if you're not lack of education will also pay you off and could be so expensive your knowledge about sex how to enjoy it how to stay long in bed how to satisfy your partner and so on will surely give you an edge over someone who doesn't know definitely so people have never really enjoyed sex or satisfied their partner because of lack of this knowledge at least 70 percent of women don't really enjoy sex with their partner when we found out what could be the primary cause of this malady we realized it's basically because of lack of knowledge by most men on how to satisfy their partner many of them don't understand female body and how it works 
apart from the general things that they can see on the outside they don't know what is going on on the inside of them of women so they don't know how to press the right buttons in giving their women maximum sexual satisfaction you see so there's so many men there are men who are ignorant we don't have so much adequate knowledge you see to be able to give their wives or their female partner the best sexual satisfaction that they can have you see in fact some men think that there's no even need for women to feel sexually satisfied okay for what for what it's a, it's a taboo for them because some of them have been dogma they, they've dogmatically believed that women could be promiscuous because of having sexual satisfaction so it is better not to make them enjoy it while they sacrifice a lot for it you see once a man has come he's good he's good to go yeah the next time he's hungry for sex but this is supposed not to be so i mean if as a matter of fact we don't give women sexual pleasure to make them to be promiscuous promiscuity is character issue that has nothing to do with sexual, sexual, sexual satisfaction what is the point of two people having sex with only one person enjoying it and he doesn't care if the other person is satisfied or not this is an act of selfishness and must be stopped if we both engage in sex and we should both enjoy it without without looking for only one person's satisfaction i believe the other is changing right now and most men are coming to the awareness of balancing the equation and giving their partner enough sexual satisfaction you wouldn't know how feeling it is how fulfilling how amazing how lovely it is to really enjoy sex and know that your partner really cares about your sexual satisfaction it is not in those days in those olden days when men who only made their wife when they want to have children just like in those days when most people thought the mouth was only for food right it was later they realized that they could talk with it they could sing with it they could breathe with it they could even have pleasure with it so in in, in the same manner sex is not only for making children like we've established you see so there are all important functions of sex and that's what we're talking about in this book so that are as they are not even associated with babies at all so having sex with your partner is first of all bonding with your partner bonding connecting with your partner without the intervention of the third party the sex is essentially for both of you you should feel happy with yourself and your partner you see so the satisfaction is ever paramount so sex make it makes both of you share love to deepen that love and pass down that love you see so that love runs over over your body and gives your emotion and feeds your thinking so when you now have baby with this sex now with this kind of love that's already all over the atmosphere the love will be passed down to your children and they will carry it to the next generation so in that case you know, you're going to have a happy family. You're going to have a happy life. So sex is, 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 is essentially to be shared, enjoyed, and cherished. So your knowledge and skills in the heart of sex will always be paramount to your enjoyment and satisfaction of it. Right. Before we close this chapter, one of the costs of sex is its consequences. This can be good or bad. So let's start with the good consequences. First is conception. Part of the cost that you may have to pay for sex is if fertilization occurs. Depending on your expectation, if you want it, then that would be a good news. But if you don't, it would be a nightmare. In any case, you don't want to risk anything. So if you don't want conception, then avoid it. Find a good birth control that is suitable for both you and your partner. It is better for you, know, for you to prevent than for you to treat it okay so if you don't want pregnancy make sure you avoid it rather than you aborting the pregnancy right that is not good so there are many people who want to have children who could not so don't waste the opportunity you have to have conception you see so very important for those expecting children pregnancy will be pregnancy will be a good consequence of the intercourse and it's a cost that both of you and your partner will be happy to pay as i've mentioned earlier that nothing goes for free so it may appear free but it's never free sex brings pregnancy and pregnancy brings baby 
So the journey takes time, money, energy, and other resources. So there's a cost of having baby. You see, the second consequence you could bear in mind as part of the cost of sex is the emotional involvement. You could be emotionally attached to the person depending on the strength of your relationship. So for people who are in long-term relationship, emotional attachment is a big deal. And as a result of sexual connection, you see, women on average are emotionally attached to their partner after a long period of sexual relationship and so consequently feel more heat of emotional trauma when they break up from their partner or on the other hand enjoy more emotional protection and support from their partner if they keep the relationship yeah very important so the other aspect of this emotional involvement is that sex makes men to come and express their giving nature an average man wants to give whatever he has in his capacity to the woman he loves and has sex with sex makes men generous and loving and so they give everything until they give their seeds yeah pretty much interesting right yeah they give everything till they give their seeds and that they are willing to give every time anytime sex could be a good way to bring out the loving nature in men another consequence of sex as part of its cause could be transmission of sexually transmitted diseases STDs are not written on the face and so to be sure that you that you are free from it medical tests must be conducted and also for your partner so one could easily avoid this by using condom or any other protective materials this could be for people who are not married or trust their partner you know and want to make sure that everything is okay before they engage in any sexual relationship. Contracting STDs could seriously affect one's health and ability to get pregnant in case of women. Okay? So, or make women pregnant. That's in the case of men. So, if a woman has got some problem, you know, with, with her fertility due to problem with STD, like uh, what we call pelvic inflammatory diseases, you know, could, could ensue from uh, some of these uh, sexually transmitted diseases. And also in the case of men, uh, who may not be able to impregnate women. So it could be a uh, problem maybe with gonorrhea or syphilis or, you know, uh, STDs that affect their, 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 their penis or, you know, or the inside of, just causing problem with some of the uh, any of the internal sexual organs right yeah so very important so we've got to make sure that we prevent this as much as possible okay so and then so treating all these things could actually be expensive could be costly depending on the type so again it's prevention is not only better than cure but it is safer easier and cheaper than cure so in order to avoid this tragedy it is better to prevent rather than treat, you see, because sometimes the infection could affect important organs in the body like the uterus, fallopian tubes, testes, liver, brain, gastrointestinal tract, and the skin. So there are different types of STDs, but the very common ones are gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, AIDS, human papilloma virus, genital shingles, hepatitis B, and chlamydia. All of this could be prevented instead of waiting for them to be contracted and then treated. You see, so in conclusion, one thing that is certain about sex is that there is a cost for it, if not cost. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why it is food because no food is free. There's no free lunch. Yes, every food comes at a cost, and so even if given for free, it is never free because it has a price and that is how sex eat chapter eight thermogenic effect what has thermogenic effect got to do with sex and food i will show you that in this chapter thermogenic effect is simply the ability of something to produce or process heat heat is a form of energy so whenever it is produced energy is produced but there's something special about it 
It is a fact that it is the only form of energy that can alter our state of matter. Matter can exist in four states, V, liquid, solid, gas, and plasma. Or sometimes they use a uh, condensed, uh, condensed, condensate, or something else. It can alter a matter in any of these states through its presence or absence. Sex and food have thermogenic effects. Both. And this similarity makes us to understand why sex is food, as you're gonna see. Now, let's first look at the thermogenic effect of food. Every food that we eat generates heat within our body. It doesn't matter if the food is cold, warm, or hot. The moment we pull the food inside our mouth and our horror cavity begins to process the food and send it down through the gastrointestinal tract, the heat begins to be generated. You see, but the question may be what is the essence or usefulness of this heat? Or what actually produces the heat? Okay, so let's start with the second question. The heat is produced as a result of the digestive function of the gastro gastrointestinal tract, secretion of juices from the various glands, and increased blood flow around the gastrointestinal areas. Think of the gastrointestinal tract as a machine that when you that when it begins to operate after a while, start producing heat, just like the way you have some machines that work and you know after after some time that they work they produce heat right so the gastrointestinal in the gastrointestinal tract is a digestive machine so anytime you put food inside it it goes into work and that makes it to produce heat the heat doesn't come from the food but from the internal structures that we've mentioned earlier right very important so now to the first question the essence of producing heat is, which is a form of energy, it is to mobilize the body chemicals and molecules for work. Molecules move faster when they are is heat. When there is heat, they move faster. You see, chemical reactions and metabolic processes can take place faster and easier when there is heat. So everything is driven towards maximum activity and performance. What would this connotes? As a matter of fact, what do we want to get from this? It means that food has the way of expediting action, it has the way of speeding up actions. You see, it can make you get things done. You see, have you noticed the time when you are so hungry and feel weak that you can't even carry yourself, or you can't even carry your body? But the moment you put something in your mouth, you begin to feel the energy coming back to your system. Obviously, it's not because of the food that you just ate that gave you the energy or the strength. But the energy that the food you had aroused in your body, you see, for sure you will start, you, 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 you will still get the energy that you, you know, from the food that you had when it's digested and absorbed. Even before then, energy is generated and that energy comes from it. And that is the thermogenic effect of food. All right. Now, to show why sex is food, we have to see the same pattern with sex. To show why sex is food. So let's check. Let's put, you know, sex now in the context of food. So every time you have sex, okay, every time you have sex, it is generated, whether you are aware of it or not. You see, that is why some people say it is a form of exercise because exercise will cause you, will cause your body to generate it. But let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see how this it is generated in sex and its purpose as we describe for food. Sex is an act that engages, is an act that engages every part of our body. So as we go into the act, our heart rate increases. Likewise, our respiratory rate, our breathing, that's you know, and blood flow and sympathetic activity also increase generally. So there is also muscular movement and increased secretion from different glands in our genital areas. As these activities begin to set in and increases. And increase this community into production of heat energy and in turn could, uh, could later be released as sweat so this energy that is produced makes us vibrant you see active and alert to the end of sex the energy can directly act on our brain cells to increase our mental performance there's high degree of cognition and mental focus after sex some people especially men have not discovered this phenomenon yet they could just go into sleep or find something else to do after sex. While whiling away, 
the fresh energy that is just generated. The energy, this energy can help men to solve problems, make important decisions and generate lofty ideas. They will simply notice increase in their mental performance and alertness. Sleeping after sex could be a passive action that one could switch into, whereas staying awake could actually require some active action. So the thermogenic, the, the, the thermogenic effect of sex makes it easy for us to do work after sex. Now since energy is the ability to do work, work can be generated whenever energy is produced, you see, and the heat energy produced during and after sex makes us strong enough and prepares us for work. This work is more of mental work, not physical activity or hard labor. And this involves the ability to engage our mind in solving practical problems and generating meaningful ideas. People who utilize this energy have seen practicable differences in their lives and endeavors. Most men that I've discussed with about this phenomenon told me that they noticed absolute concentration and mental performance during this act or just after sex with their partner. During that period of just having sex with their partner, they noticed increased focus and attention no matter that they are of concern, no matter what is of concern to them. And they start working out solution on those matters. They also observed increase in memory and were able to remember many things in the past they have that they have skipped their mind but useful in solving the present problem at hand. So it just basically improved you know their, their memory capacity, their mental performance. It's, 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 it's a very powerful phenomenon. Yeah, to explain this phenomenon more scientifically, let's look at some chemicals that are released in our body during sex. According to some scientific research, we know certain hormones are produced during orgasm and there's increased blood flow into some certain brain areas during sex. You see, so all this could increase activity in the brain, which will increase mental performance. Some of the hormones released during and after sex are, are oxytocin, dopamine, dihydroepinandosterone, deer, endorphins, and prolactin. So, okay, let's look at the function of, this, of these hormones. Let's start with oxytocin. Oxytocin is a love hormone. It increases calmness, trust, social interaction, and bonding, and it even also decreases fear. It increases general well-being and bonding, okay? Oxytocin can increase men's ability to take risk while remaining calm with taking the right decisions and dissolving fears. Dopamine is important in executive functions. Dopamine because it allows focus, such as discrete thinking, executive functions like discrete thinking, planning, judgment, working memory and self-control, motor control, motivation, arousal, reinforcement, and pleasure reward mechanism. Dopamine doesn't only give men pleasure during sex, it also increases the ability to perform mentally after sex. It increases the ability to think, to plan, and to execute their plans with self-control and determination, with eye focus, yeah. So, Okay, let's go to, this, to, the, to, the, to the third hormone, DIA, that's the hydroepiandosterone, is found to increase neuronal functions, including neurogenesis, neuronal growth and differentiation, and also neuroprotection. It prevents chronic and oxidative stress and aids production of estrogen and, te and testosterone hormones for sexual functions. It also affects cognitive function and memory and it reduces the risk of having diabetes, obesity, obesity immune disorders, atherosclerosis and cancer. So DIA has anti-depression effect and its and its reduction could cause muscle weakness, lack of lack of energy, lack you know lethargy, 
infertility and weight loss okay so presence of deer during and after sex will increase energy vibrancy and reduction of stress okay so let's look at endorphins endorphins help in dealing with stress reduction of pain boosting of pleasure and increased general well-being endorphins are generally released in 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 in, in response to increased physical activities such as, such as sex exercise massage dining out or even taking a walk right the release of endorphins during sex makes positive vibes and energy available after sex sex is reduced and focus is increased making one feel happy at life and achieving goals prolactin increases milk production in women increases testosterone secretion in men improves stress adaptation causes neurogenesis and enhance proliferation of brain supportive cells thereby how it's all about increasing brain power all of this ensure in more mental performance increased strength and situational adaptation as we've seen in this chapter energy is made available during and after sex be it in form of heat and other forms which makes work easier and performance higher the moderate level of heat generated during sex put the body on a pedestal of activity and performance after sex and as we've seen similar case with food this phenomenon establishes one of the reasons why sex is food chapter 9 positions in this chapter we will we will use positions to describe why sex is food most people like sitting on the chair to eat why some other people like sitting on the floor some may even prefer squatting or standing while occasionally some may just be walking and be hitting whichever position is suitable for you what is important is that you are comfortable with the position while hitting you see from time to time we change how we hit and the position that we assume the ideal position to sit is to sit uprightly I mean the ideal position to sit when you want to hit is for you to sit uprightly to allow easy flow of food down you know uh, your, your tract your gastrointestinal tract positions like turning the head upside down while hitting could actually be dangerous because it doesn't allow easy flow of food and also increases tendency to, tendency of food getting to unwanted places which may cause more havoc to your body system right so position is definitely important while hitting food but is that the same case with sex if sex must be enjoyed and endured not and not endured position is also important so in this chapter we want to look at some common sex positions and see how they are important for enjoying it for enjoying sex so the first one is a uh, cowgirl cowgirl in this sex position a woman sits on top of the man and she pushes off his chest and slides up and down his thighs while he lies on his back she can turn opposite and back his face to do reverse girl reverse cow girl she can relieve him of her weight by leaning back with her hand and supporting herself on his thighs this position allows a woman to control the thrust and rhythm and get maximum stimulation from the penetration okay so the second position is spooning spooning a man and a woman lie together on their sides both facing the same direction with her in front and him behind he assumes the big spoon cuddling her and she assumes the little spoon fitting him she separates her legs a little bit and allow penetration into her anus or vagina from the rear. This sex position is highly comfortable, less trust, and maximum pleasure. The short strokes from him target at G spots 
and makes it enjoyable for her. There might be need for hips adjustment and the man grinding his hips against her butts and he can easily finger her from behind as well. Okay, so the third sex position is doggy style. This position puts a woman on her knees with her two hands down and a man enters from behind, whether from anna or vagina penetration whether for HANA or vaginal penetration. This position allows for greater depth of penetration and G-spot stimulation. So it is great for high sex drives. Then four, the fourth position is missionary. This is one of the ancient sex positions practiced by missionaries who were on missions and could only assume this position every time they had sex. Most people still love this position in this position, a woman lies on her back and a man lies face down on top of her. This position allows intimate communication while having deep penetration. It is simple, elegant, effective and surprisingly versatile with adjusting the hips for penetration at different angles. The fifth sex position is what we call flatteron. In this position, the woman lies on the bed face down, straight, straightens her legs, raises her hips slightly and the man penetrates from behind in that flat lying position. This sex position creates a snug fit and very close bonding, so the man's penis will be felt more. The sixth position is what we call ballet dancer. In this sex position, a woman stands on one foot facing a man and wrap a leg around his waist while he holds and supports her. This allows him to penetrate her front to front and trust as comfortable. This position allows for quality face time and connecting with one's partner. The seventh sex position is what we call cross booty. A man first lie on top on top of a woman and penetrate her and then slide his chest and leg off her body to the sides so that both of their pelvises are in the same position while their upper and lower parts of their body take a X position. A woman feels more of a man's body in motion with this sex position while she can massage his back, butt or legs as he trusts. Then the eighth sex position is what we call tabletop. Tabletop. This position allows a woman to lie on, on the table or any flat surface and a man penetrates her while standing. She can sit or lean on her back while he enters her. This position is good for face-to-face -face action. And if they both have different heights, this position can put both of them at the same height. Okay. So the ninth position is what we call snow angel. In this position, a woman lies on her back and a man straddles her facing opposite direction. She lifts her legs up and wrap them around his back to elevate her pelvis so he can enter her. She can grab his butt and add a little massage action to her grip to help him slide up and back. This position allows her to fondle his scrotum while he rubs it against a cleat. Then the tenth sex position is what we call face off. In this position, the man sits on a chair, on a chair or bed corner, and the woman faces him, seated on his lap. This sex position allows the woman to be in control of the angle and depth of the entry and thrust, since it is since it is a seated position it is good for marathon sex these positions and many other sex positions allow both partners to enjoy sex and feel each other more so changing position during sex or trying new positions in the next sex can be a game changer for many partners in having full sexual experience and enjoying every moment of their sex life up to the level of both satisfaction chapter 10 before and after 
look let's look at two important phenomena in this chapter what happened before and after sex this is similar to what happened before and after food these two phenomena establish why sex is food you bear in mind that in this book we've established why sex is food and we are using both direct and comparative analysis to prove our point some people may know that sex is they know that sex is food but may not know why this book establishes those reasons let's start with food what happens before we eat food we're hungry very hungry or slightly hungry okay so when we are hungry we don't know we don't know any other thing apart from food we crave food so bad as if you know as we've discussed earlier in this book hunger is a feeling that makes us crave food and draw us towards it if we are not hungry we might not look for food if we don't look for food we might die of starvation since we get energy and nutrients from food and these are used to drive our body activities and metabolic processes so when we lack this this energy and nutrients because of not eating food we deny ourselves of living a healthy life but just before we eat food what happens in our system to understand it we have to know where hunger comes from or what triggers it hunger is a result of depletion of energy stores in our body normally when we eat our body doesn't make use of all the energy it got from the food it reserves some for the future that's the one that is stored in the energy in the energy stores so when this storage is depleted we we get signal for refill that signal is called hunger and this process happens in a coordinated and organized fashion there are certain hormones and neurotransmitters that mediate this process and trigger our desire for food ghrelin growth hormone orexin that's hypocretin neuropeptide y melanin concentrating hormone galanin and agutine related peptide are all implicated in triggering our appetite for food but these chemicals are not just secreted all the time they respond to decrease in energy stores in our body and increase our craving for food to refill the energy stores on on a more curious note it is so amazing how we feel so hungry and we're never tired of it overfeeding our stomach yesterday does not stop us from feeling hungry today and the feeling is always fresh and strong it is inherent and instinctive we don't have to learn or acquire it it is important for our health and survival and survival not feeling hungry as the way we ought to might affect our food intake which in turn will affect how much energy and nutrients we have in our system this this in turn could lower our energy and nutrients and nutrient levels which will make us susceptible to sickness and infections before we eat food we crave it like crazy we can't wait to have it in our mouth especially when it's our favorite food we go all out we could fight for it if there's need to because this is something that directly affects our survival we have so much craving and attachment for it but the moment we are full we don't want it anymore and can easily disconnect from it but how managed just in the space of few minutes strong feeling of hunger suddenly subside into feeling of satisfaction that is satiety we now feel full and satisfied are no longer interested in anything that has to do with food at least for the moment so what brought these two opposing feelings together the answer is the need for survival man needs to survive by looking for food and also needs to survive by stopping to eat because too much intake of food could end up in obesity and death so the two opposing feelings are brought together to bring moderation and satisfaction though there are cases when these feelings are not well regulated and ensure an issue in overheating and obesity but notwithstanding the two feelings of hunger and satiety keep us connected to food when needed and disconnected from food when no longer needed let's connect this with sex one of the reasons why sex is food what is the feeling before and after sex 
when we are hungry for for sex we don't know any other thing apart from sex we just want just as when we are hungry for food some people especially men can give out their their last dime on it the feeling is so strong and fresh scientific studies have shown that many similar areas in the brain control both food and sex it stands to reason therefore that both are needed for survival to keep us as a species and to keep us as individuals when you're hungry for sex you want to have it by all means you feel strong connection and craving for opposite sex people who don't find sex partner find alternative they hear themselves of the pressure sexual desire by masturbating as that was discussed earlier in this book masturbation is just a way of deceiving the mind to release semen while rubbing the genitals but the issue at hand now is to understand what happens before and after sex as the craving is so much before the heart that it looks like one would die if they didn't do it just some minutes after the heart is done it is no longer interesting and the strong desire that was there before plummeted we call this phase resolution the time when sexual arousal and pleasure began to fall and eventually become zero there are four phases of sexual intercourse v's sexual arousal plateau orgasm and resolution the first three phases always make one to crave sex because of the feeling and the last phase makes one to feel this connection from sex at that moment depending on individuals one may feel satisfied and don't want the partner anymore at least for the moment or just fall asleep after having a sex that has long been desired people especially men have a way of disconnecting from sex the moment they are done with the heart and might no longer want to have it until the next time they are craving for it just like food so looking at these two phenomena before and after sex we were we've established why sex is food because we saw the exactity and similarities between sex and food using the concept of before and after the two acts chapter 11 process and act sex as we know it is not just an act it is an act that we must learn how to perform just as food that we learn how to cook it is not enough to know that sex is innate and natural we must learn how to do it and do it well people who know how to cook food enjoy eating good food why people who know how to cook good food they actually enjoy eating good food yeah that's right so why those who don't know struggle with eating bad food or pay est- i mean expensively to get good food from those who know how to do it many people have suffered they've suffered not enjoying good sex for themselves and their partners and one of the reasons as established before is lack of knowledge so in this chapter we will discuss the process and how of sex and see why it is food there's need to there's need for cooking sex just as the way we cook food imagine when you want to cook some food the process you go through okay so you go to the market you buy the ingredients to come back home to prepare the food so the cooking may take longer or shorter time depending on the type of food that you're cooking so the moment you're done you serve the food and heat depending on how well you prepare the food it will show in how the food turns out now we have similar scenario with sex many people don't know that we cook sex as well if you as a man If you are a man and you want to have sex with your, with your wife, you want to make sure you cook it so that she can enjoy it. How? You start early. You know cooking takes time. You have a good talk with her. Give her attention and care. Do things for her and bring her little surprises. You can follow a love language if you know. If you don't, find out. Women love sex. Women love when sex when sex happens because you love them not you love them because of sex so to enjoy sex with a woman it must be well co- well cooked men who know how to do this very well always have free days with their wives why the ones who don't who don't know struggle with their sex lives 
women can give 1001 complaints why they can't do something and can also give you 1001 reasons why they will always love to do something so whichever whichever one you want as a man you choose the skill and knowledge that you have about how to cook sex and serve your wife very well we always make her to want to have you and please you cooking sex is not limited to men women who want to who want their men to enjoy sex with them to also need to learn how to cook it as well you want to improve your bed skills your bed your, your skills on the on the bed your dressing and makeup your body shape and general look and of course your general disposition and character men apart from looks I are highly attracted to women of good character. Men love value. So anytime they see that in women, they are captivated. As a woman, when you improve your physical, moral, emotional, mental, and social value, men cannot but flood around you. You see, you become the talk of the town just because you change yourself. Everything has changed around you. Cooking sex is important if we have to enjoy it. With cooking sex, we understand that sex is not just an act. It is done with, within the. It is not just an act that is done within the four walls of the bedroom or in the eating place only, but everything we do together in love. Since from our definition that sex is not, is not just the intercourse, but a collection of what connects us and differentiates us. Therefore, it stands to reason that what what will make us to enjoy the act sexual intercourse will be everything that connects that connects us together in terms of sharing love and affection and differentiates us in terms of our unique qualities and characters and as we establish our differences are for attraction and our attraction is for conception so this eventually makes us productive and effective as one spirit in two bodies that's powerful okay so chapter 12 choices and preferences making choices and preferences could be one of the reasons why sex is food okay as we're going to see in this chapter we make choices with food every time depending on how capable we are we select the kind of food we want to eat based on our appetite sometimes we crave several food sometimes we crave sugary foods and there are times when we crave spicy food and all of these depend on many factors. Part of the reasons, part of the factors is how we're brought up, our, upbring, our upbringing, okay? So the kind of diet that we eat while growing up affects our eating habit when we become adults. The environment where we live also contributes to our choice and preferences of food. If you are used to eating salad at least once a day, salad will be part of, will be part of your choice anytime you're selecting food even if you move to another environment. Also, people who love eating spicy food can't rest until they put something spicy in their mouth. All of this comes from the habits that we've already developed while eating food based on the choices and preferences that we've made in the past about food. Let's look at sex. The kind of mindset and understanding that you had about sex while growing up affects the choices that you make with it. And just as food, your sex habits come from the environment and what you've learned by yourself. For instance, somebody might crave having oral sex while the other person might abhor it. One, one person might love certain sex position while the other person might, not, might dislike it. It doesn't mean the choices are bad, it just means individual's choice is based on their sexual habits. You see? So you know it's easier to change actions, but not habits. Once something becomes your habit, it has already gone down to the level of your subconscious mind, wherein you are no longer consciously in control of it. So you take decisions passively and easily. But to change your habit, you've got to be active and serious about it, because it will require a lot of effort and persistence. And the moment a new habit is formed, it becomes easier to make choice or decision in line of your habit. Our sex habits are the product of the choices and preferences that we've made in the past about sex. For some of us, these choices are made passively and by default 
we inculcated these habits. For instance, growing up in an environment where people don't like talking about sex or bringing up sexual matters in an open discussion will mean such person will be reserved about sexual matters even if they move to another environment. Having learned some wrong things about sex, maybe through social media or other media outlets, individuals began to frame their mind in that direction and that eventually become their sex habits. If children have witnessed their parents always fighting over sexual matters and the mother is not always happy when the father is having sex with her, will mean to the children that sex is not what can be enjoyed but endured with fights and struggles until the children adopt new mindsets. This wrong mindset could as well become their sex habits later in future with their spouse. This is more, this is more reason why parents must show their children good sex behavior and give them comprehensive sex education. You know? So this is a very, very important concept. Now, comprehensive sex education is, uh, is a form of education in which case you educate your children about everything on sex. You see, you're not hiding anything. You're not just preaching abstinence. You're telling them about sex, what sex is all about, how you can enjoy it, how pleasurable it is, and how to protect yourself against diseases, against sexually transmitted diseases, and some other risk associated with it, like unwanted pregnancy and some other problems so you want to share with your children you want to educate your children about sex education that is comprehensive you want to make it comprehensive you want it to just put all the cards on the table and let them see for themselves and make their own choice without without imposing any ideology or anything about you know sex on them right very important concept that we gotta understand okay so let's continue yeah actually by the way that was like out, out of the book i just uh, discussed that briefly okay so there's no point having sex with someone with whom you're not on the same page as a matter of fact for young people before you get married you must discuss extensively your sexual choices and preferences with your partner you must understand each other's sex habits it doesn't mean someone has been having sex it just means everyone has already programmed sex behavior and the way they will respond to sex in different situations which they might have learned by default or intentionally sex matters have been one of the major causes of divorce and marriages partly because the partners have different sex habits and behaviors which are difficult to compromise so lead to serious misunderstanding apart from men being more sexually active than women that's sexual kinkiness sexual kinkiness like always wants to explore new things about sex you know this sexual being sexually kinky yeah it's a very kind of weird you know behavior connected with sex you know yeah sometimes just you know, just show some 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 weird behavior you know that being sexually kinky just want to try new things want to try different things explore new things about sex and going on sexual escapades cool you know all these things could actually put the other partner off who is not sexually kinky or worse they want to file for divorce you see so sex is always a sensitive matter to discuss and so if one doesn't have an open and learning mind it might be difficult to change one's sex habits and learn new things for some people, sex is not just about pleasure. It's not. It's not. It's not about pleasure. It is for making babies. You see, for some people, that's just their own ideology. Sex is not just. It's not. It's not for pleasure. They don't connect pleasure with sex. For them, it's just okay. Let's just make babies. You see, and so they have sex with stress and don't care whether it's comfortable or satisfactory for their partner or not. You see, that's the that, that's the problem. Because if they are not looking at the pleasure, the other aspect of sex, if all they are looking at is just making babies, then it's going to be with struggles and, and difficulties, you see. So they don't even care about their partner, whether their partner is comfortable or not, because they know they're just doing it for making babies, you see. Not for them to enjoy it, you see. So some religious, some use religion 
and traditional belief to cover up their ignorance. You see, but sex is never about those things, but about individuals and their choices. Everyone has right to choose what they want, and that is the fundamental right that the Creator has given every human being. But to come with the ideology of religion and culture to override individuals' choice is not permissible by God and humanity. You see, that is why to be on the same page when it comes to sexual matters with your partner is very important. When it comes to this sexual injustice, women are usually at the receiving end, especially in many developing countries. They are being denied their right to choose what they want as pertaining to sex and could easily be labeled sluts if, by chance, they express their sexual interest and desire. You see, what could be termed as slut shaming. Behaviors such as sexual bullying, sexual abuse, and victim blaming are still very much rampant in certain parts of the world, and women have been the victims in most cases. You see, it's so sad. So, but who, who said that sex is only for men or should only be enjoyed by men when it is two people that are having it? Is that not cheating or an unfair behavior? In as much as we all have feelings and desires and we crave sex and food as one as our basic human instincts, even though we have different levels, we have different levels of desires and interests, it is all our right to enjoy them and feel satisfied without any feeling of shame or apology very important very important all right okay so chapter 13 distractions in this last chapter we want to look at distractions on the basis of why sex is food throughout this book we've explored different areas of sex in connection with food sex is not just connected with the physical food that we eat as we've seen but it is food in the literal sense of it. It gives us all that food gives and exemplifies all what food is all about. So in this chapter, we look at distractions, vis-a-vis -vis sex and food. As some of us might have experienced, there could be distractions during having sex, just as the way we could be distracted during eating food. These distractions could be external or internal. The external distractions come from our immediate environment and surrounding, while internal distractions come from what happens inside of us, such as our thoughts and feelings. Alright, so let's start with the, uh, with the first, external distractions. If you are in an environment where there is noise or excessive sound, that may distract you and make you not to enjoy sex with your partner. Or also if there is air pollution, excessively cold or hot weather, messy room, dead and refuses around, all these could be distractions. Okay? Another important distraction could be from your partner if your partner has body odor or poor body hygiene. So that may irritate and distract you. This challenge is usually common among men because they have higher metabolic rate and more tendency to take less care of their body because of their carefree nature. You see, women, on the other hand, are usually at the receiving end and don't find this funny most of the time because they, because many of them are actually sensitive to smell. So, and poor body hygiene easily puts them off. Some of them may not talk about it to their men because they would not want them to feel bad. But on a lighter note after sex, okay, come on, it should be mentioned to, to, to them. You see, women, tell men about these things so that they will change, okay? So there are some women too who are not so hygienic body-wise. They don't clean up their private parts and don't shave, don't shave to remove all the, all the dirty hairs. They just assume those, those, those places will be clean on their own. Worse still, they don't regularly wash their underwear and they wear dirty clothes. All this can be a strong turn off for men who are hygienic and will not want transmission of body infections. Poor body hygiene is not tolerable for any of the sexes and must be avoided by all means 
as it could be a major distraction during sex. A distraction can be absence of physical comfort like a good bed, pillows, press sheets, clean floor, chair, or, and other furniture that could help having a good sex at different positions. So when normal things that you just expect to be in a room are not present, that could be a distraction as it might bring physical discomfort or pains. Also, absence of lubric lubricating and protective materials could be a distraction during sex. Some women who are afraid of getting pregnant and they see their partner not wearing condom could easily get distracted. So getting a good condom at that moment will remove that distraction. Having sex without adequate lubrication in the genitals could also be a distraction as that can cause friction and then cause pain. Women experience pains when there's too much friction on the wall of their vagina as the penis is penetrated without lubrication. Apart from normal secretions that come from the glands in the vaginal wall, lubricants can be used to reduce the friction and make trusting and other movement during sex easy. Physical pain is a distraction during sex, so you want to avoid it at all costs. You want to let the muscle relax, especially the ones that the ones are the limbs you want to be comfortable with your breathing and make sure there is adequate ventilation and fresh air you also want to be comfortable with all the move, moves and positions that you assume with your partner during sex all of these are important okay so let's look at the other part of distraction that's the internal distractions the internal distractions include distracting thoughts and feelings some of them we have been alluded to them yeah in the course of this book as a matter of fact both internal and external distractions are connected and one can be influenced by the presence of the other for instance the presence of bad odor that's external distraction could make a partner to start feeling irritated that is internal distraction whereas irritation could have happened on its own without any external distraction of uh, smelling bad of bad body odor right but the presence of the external distractions influences the presence of the internal distraction you see so this happens in most cases or uh, sometimes there could be some thoughts that could distract one during sex like remem remembering a bad experience thinking of the debt that you're owing or other financial problems problem with self-esteem and self-identity thinking of your incomplete projects thinking about the loss of your loved one remembering some disputes and misunderstanding that you had that, that you had with your partner or another person and so on some of these feelings could be negative or positive most times they are negative because positive feelings cause little or no distraction why negative feelings are the culprits of internal distractions during sex some of some of some of the negative feelings are the feeling feeling tired weak feeling disgusted feeling irritated feeling worried feeling anxious feeling disturbed feeling afraid feeling intimidated feeling dishonest feeling cheated feeling angry feeling hungry feeling sad feeling oppressed feeling careless feeling unappreciated feeling less valued feeling heavy feeling emotional pains feeling guilt feeling unworthy, feeling immoral, feeling unholy, feeling betrayed, feeling unloved, feeling underrated, feeling used, feeling untrustworthy, feeling untrusted, feeling uncommitted, feeling unstable, feeling irrational, feeling awkward, feeling hated, feeling envy, feeling cheated, feeling jealous, feeling pre prejudiced, feeling discriminated, feeling isolated, feeling not able to express and so on you see there's so many feelings that we can that can put partners off during sex especially women as naturally their their system is so sensitive and volatile to people and their surroundings meanwhile on the on depend on the location or environment you may not be able to prevent or avoid all these distractions but you can sure minimize them and control the ones that you can 
Distractions during sex don't make us enjoy it just as distractions during food don't make us enjoy it as well. So some people talk while eating why, and they are comfortable with it. Why some other people are not comfortable with talking while eating. This same thing is applicable to sex. Some people might be comfortable with talking while having sex. Why some other people might not be, might not like that idea. Though talking during sex can be really romantic and soothing, especially when both of you are talking about how, how you are enjoying the intercourse. What some people could call dirty talks. Okay, maybe you've had uh, the experience before too. You, you just engage in dirty talks with your with your partner. You're just talking about how you're enjoying the 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 the, the, the sex. How, uh, how how you're enjoying the penetration and you know the caressing and the uh, and the rubbing and you know the licking and all kind of uh, things that we do during sex, right? So this will make both of them, both uh, you know uh, uh, partners, appreciate each other more and know how to satisfy one another. Each partner will actually know how and where to stimulate to give their partner maximum pleasure which is what we want during sex anyways there's no point having sex if there's no room for enjoyment and satisfaction it is not enough to just want to have sex we must we must see to appreciate everything about it if the creator doesn't want us to enjoy sex he wouldn't have connected pleasure with it why must it be that the most sweetest and the most pleasurable feeling we will always have as human beings is sex it means there's a purpose for it and as we've established in this book the the, the purpose of sex is not limited to just giving birth but to share love bond more heal more and live more in as much as we want to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the health we must understand that the journey starts from ourselves our love sharing and satisfaction we should seek to satisfy one another first and share love before we bring up the third person into this world that is giving birth to a child i'm not sure you see i'm sure if this is a mantra many of the couples who many of the couples will not be divorcing like the way they do because they will understand that it is when they are together that they can have fruitful and productive family and that starts from sharing love during sex and appreciating one another there's no point rushing into giving birth when the couple is nowhere grounded in love and satisfaction very important as we as we've established in this book sex connects us to one another it makes us appreciate our differences and become attracted to one another because of those differences so why should those differences become a nightmare why should we eat each other because of those differences it must be that we've not known and appreciate that enough and that and it's high time we did it's easier to fall in love during sex and also fall out of love during sex so we choose the one we want if we fall in love during sex the love will multiply if we fall out of love during sex, the love, the love will diminish it. And we begin to eat on each other and looking for faults. But a good sex is grounded in love, the end of the book. I hope you enjoy this book. If you enjoy it, so make sure you, you, you like the, the, the audio book and you can also order your own copy from Amazon. Uh, from Amazon, say so just type "Why Sex Is Food" by Isopians. You will get a copy of the book. You can read it. Uh, yeah, and then please remember to post your review on the on Amazon, so that more people can read it and then be also motivated to go get their own copy as well. All right. So before we go, let me quickly mention a few things. Important notice: Do you have an idea? Do you have something you're passionate about? 
do you have an experience worth sharing if your answer is yes then you are qualified to have your own book so you don't need to be a writer you just need to be an author yeah so contact me as at sopiensofgod at gmail.com let's make your book happen and then remember one of the best ways that you can add value to your world is to share and document your ideas take action now about the book about the book why sex is food is a book that outlines unconventional wisdom unconventional wisdom on sex it describes the purpose and pleasure of sex using its food nature we know food gives us energy and nutrients and it is critical for our survival sex gives us energy and nutrients as well and it's indispensable for our survival and perpetuation of our species from this book you will understand why sex is food and why it is not just for conception but also for connection you will understand the capacity of sex to foster bond love and perpetuation of our species on earth you will also understand the indispensability of sex that has made its influence so strong on us and how it has become our strongest feeling and desire and what we can we cannot but express on the basis of its beautiful purpose and pleasure you will definitely love this book great about the author esopian is an insightful lead writer and leader he has plus knowledge and shares it he is a specialist on human health and works on areas of prevention he has one singular mantra that penetrates all his cause which is prevention is not only better than cure it is safer easier and faster than cure 